see you go for very short tubes all right let's now talk about musical instruments of course musical instruments make use of this property all musical instruments that is wind instrument what's a wind instrument a wind instrument makes use of the resonance of air columns to produce musical notes string instruments uses the resonance of vibrations of strings to produce musical notes percussion instruments that is stretched membranes like a drum is using a stretched membrane and the vibrations of a stretched membrane will produce beautiful musical note have you ever heard of African drum playing well I'm, I'm very fond of that okay now they all produce fundamental notes and higher harmonics I, I told you some time ago that the quality of the note produced by a given musical instrument is due to the particular combinations of the overtones. Overtones are higher harmonics. You see, every musical instrument, along with producing the fundamental frequency, they can also produce higher harmonics. It is the combination of the higher harmonics with the fundamental that gives a musical instrument that unique quality, the quality of the sound which you can immediately recognize when you hear a note coming from a guitar you know it's coming from a guitar when the same note comes from a piano you know it is from a piano when the same note comes from a violin you know it is from a violin so although the same frequency notes are produced by different instruments they can be traced back to where it came from due to that particular quality. What is the quality due to? Each instrument has that unique combinations of the higher harmonics along with the fundamental. That gives that unique quality. For the same musical note, the combinations of the overtones are different for different instruments giving rise to that unique quality of the note from each instrument. Now, a church organ. Have you seen a church organ? A church organ is a wind instrument. And it uses many hundreds of, sometimes thousands of pipes. Each pipe is meant to produce one musical note. So a church organ is a wind instrument using individual pipes for each musical note. If you walk into a big cathedral, you can actually see the organ, the organ pipes. They are big pipes and small pipes, all beautifully organized. And the, the church will be reverberating with music from the, from the organ. Now here I have the picture of... Uh, uh, the, almost the biggest church organs in the world. You see, the St. Stephen's Cathedral in Passau, Germany has 1,774 open tubes. Isn't it amazing? That means each of the notes that is produced in the music that is sung in the church come from each of these tubes. Well, let's take a look and see, we can listen to some of these uh, musical instruments. Look at some stringed instruments. What are some of the stringed instruments you have? You have the first one is violin. And uh, how does it sound? How violent sound. How about viola? If you are familiar with music, you know that you can pick out the difference between these two musical sounds. All right, how about cello? And look at uh, another 
a stringed instrument, the bass. Let's now take some look at wind instruments. Well, the flute is the first wind instrument, yeah? Alright, how about the piccolo? And then you have the clarinet. And of course you have the orde. You have the saxophone. Bill Clinton is one of that. Let's take a look at some brass instruments. There is the French horn. And of course the trumpet. The tuba. The, there was a weatherman in NBC who used to play around with the tuba. And the trombone. Now, finally, let's take a look at some of the percussion instruments. The first one is the cymbals. There you are. How about the snare drum? And the tupani. And finally, the bass drum. It doesn't want to produce any sound. Well, you see, we had quite a good look at many of the musical instruments. All right. Let's now look at the resonance tube to measure the velocity of sound in the air. That's an experiment that you will be doing the resonance of air column to measure the velocity of sound in the air. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to demonstrate that to you and then I will come back and set up the theory, all right? So give me a second, I will set up the demonstration. The equipment that we will use for the experiment will look like this. Here we have a reservoir that contains some liquid. Well, normally it is water. I put some color so that it will record better. And you have a tube, this is the open tube, well, the open at the top and closed here, you see, where the liquid is, is the bottom of the air column. So you have the air column enclosed in here, this is a closed tube. Now, I can increase or decrease the length of the air column by moving the water. You see that? If I move the reservoir out, you can see the water level will fall, the length of the air column will increase. Now, I'm going to keep it back in there. What I'm going to do is, first I'm going to use a clip, now here's a clip, I'm going to clip the tube. Now, once I clip it, the water will not flow. So, I'm going to leave the reservoir down there. And what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to, uh, oh well, before I do that, I want to take the level all the way back up. I want to make sure that the level is all the way up there. All right, let me run the level. The level is now increasing. All right. And once the level reaches, say, somewhere here, I'm going to stop it. And then I'll take the reservoir down. Okay. I'm going to clip it now. And I'm going to move uh, the reservoir down. And I will open the clip in a controlled manner so that the water level will fall slowly. And what I will do is, I will vibrate a tuning fork and keep it at the mouth. And as the length of the air column increases, 
at a certain length, at a particular length, the natural frequency of the air column will be the same as the frequency of the tuning fork. You will hear the first mode of vibration, the first mode of resonance. All right, let's do that. I'm going to open the clip to allow the water to fall gently so that now listen to this I'm going to vibrate the tuning fork and keep it there now I have actually passed the resonance so I'm going to do that again to make sure that I don't pass the resonance alright give me some more time I'm going to take the water level back Alright, let the water level go back to the highest level. There it is going. Okay, let's take it all the way to about 10 centimeter. Alright. Okay, and now I'm going to uh, clip it there if I can. Well, there. I'm going to clip it there and then I'm going to move the reservoir down and I'm going to make the water fall slowly so that I can control it. There it's falling slowly and uh, that means the level of the the length of the air is increasing and listen carefully for the sound all right now did you hear that loud sound that is the resonance that happened at 16 centimeter that is the first mode of vibration and you know at the first mode of vibration you have an anti-node at the mouth a node at the closed end and now I'm going to let the water flow again so that I can get a second resonance a second resonance for a larger length now tell me if I got the first resonance at 16 centimeter at 16 centimeter where should I expect the next resonance? The next resonance will be another half a wavelength down. So it will be 16 is a quarter of a wavelength. Another half a wavelength will be another 32. That will be 16 plus 32 is about 48. So I'm looking for the second resonance around 48 when I will have a, an antinode, a node, antinode, and a node. That will be the mode of vibration. Now let's see if we will get a resonance around 48 centimeter. Now I want you to listen this carefully. There you are, it is exactly at 48 we got the second resonance. Alright, so this is the equipment we use. Let me now set up the theory for you. Here I have a picture of the equipment.